Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel, we'll take a look at five 3D printed tools for 3D printing. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Becoming a member is a great way to support the channel and has a few perks besides just getting your name in lights here. Click the join button to find out more. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to look at five 3D printed tools for 3D printing. I got the idea for this episode when I was trying to get some really thin parts off a of flex plate on one of my 3D printers. Even though flex plates make it super easy to remove parts, their weakness is parts that also flex, like prints that are only a couple of layers thick, or the skirts and brims that you use around models. The worst is when you have to stop a print on the first or second layer, and then you try to get a fingernail under a corner of one, and you end up jabbing yourself under your nail. That ever happened to you? It happened to me. Now, some printers come with a metal putty knife that can scratch the bed if you're not careful, so I wanted something printed. I've used this scraper before and it works pretty well, but then I went looking on printables.com to see what else was available and I found this one. Now, by the way, all the models I'm showing today are on printables.com. And of course, they're all free, so you can download and print some for your very own. Links for all of them are in the description. Now, back to this little round scraper. It excels at getting under the edges of those one or two layer thick things and angling them up and away from the bed so you can remove them. It prints in under an hour. In fact, pretty much all the things that I'm going to show you today will print in under an hour. It's called simply Thin Layers Scraper by Designer SH. It's just a little round thing that looks like a suction cup, but it's got a really thin edge to get up under the edges of things on the print bed. I started printing a CHEP calibration cube, but then I stopped it after the first couple of layers so you could see the scraper thing in action. It just gets up under that part and pops it free. And if one part of its edge gets damaged, well, there's plenty more edge you can use. And if you decide you like it, you can print the second one as a spare. Next up, this little tool helps keep the gunk out of the blowers on your 3D printer. It's the Fan Rake by designer Matt Boyer. Over time, the parts cooling fan on a 3D printer can attract dust and debris that stick to the blades. This tool is designed for the centrifugal blower type fans like this 5015 blower, so called because it's 50 millimeters in diameter and 15 millimeters thick. The three fingers on it each have a hook angled backward to grab onto and drag out whatever's stuck in the fan. I don't have any supremely gunked up fans, but I can show you the picture from printables.com. It looks like that thing sucked up an entire cat but this fan rake is getting it clean. This is only about a 25 minute print and it won't take a lot of filament either. Now, here's a handy way to keep SD cards and micro SD cards organized. It's the SD card holder by Designer Tritchy. This one takes about two hours to print and it holds four micro SD cards and two regular sized SD cards. The cards are held in place by these clever little parts that keep a little bit of pressure on them so they don't fall out. And the whole assembly slides together, snapping into place with a satisfying click. Next, here is a cool print. These are Precision Folding Tweezers by Designer M4NU. These take about an hour to print. They print flat, and they have tiny hinges built into them, so they fold together into a pair of tweezers. They can't get into as tight of a spot as metal tweezers, but they're still pretty good for grabbing screws or nuts that have fallen down inside a printer or into the slots in a printer's aluminum extrusions. They're also handy for picking up screws and things out of small parts bins. Think resistors, LEDs, or other electronic components, so these are also handy if you're into breadboarding electronics projects. Although I printed these in a single color, you can pause your printer mid-print and swap in a different filament color to get a two-tone look to them. Give them a try, they're a quick print, and they may come in handy. And as long as you're picking up screws and nuts with those cool 3D printed tweezers, why not use this to sort and organize them? This is the Rapid Screw Measuring Tool Slim Edition by Designer Elden Root. I've got a few bins of miscellaneous screws that I've used on various printer projects over the years and I haven't gotten around to sorting them back into the assortment packs that I pulled them from. Now I can generally tell by looking at a screw whether it's an M3, M4, or M5, but I'm less good at estimating the length of them. So this tool is really going to help me out. 
The notches on the left side will show you if it's an M2, M2.5, M3, M4, or M5 screw. And the center section will show you how long it is. So this is an M4 by 20 screw. This one is an M3 by 12. And this one is an M5 by 8. On the back, it'll let you size hex nuts. From the top, it's got cutouts for M5 through M2 nuts. They're not labeled, but they align with the sizing notches so you can tell what's what. This should help me get the screws and my random screw bins sorted and organized. So that's five 3D printed tools that can help make your 3D printing life easier. But I've got a couple more that I like, so you're getting some bonus tools. This one is a radius finder by designer Victor NPB. It'll let you measure the radius of things from one millimeter up to 12 millimeters. It takes about 45 minutes to print and it's really handy if you're designing a 3D model of a real world object. Or if you're designing a model that's supposed to accommodate a real world object. Maybe you want to design and print a case for your cell phone and it has rounded corners. This radius finder will show you the radius of that curve so you're not having to print a bunch of test pieces to see if they fit. And the last thing I want to show you is a filament clip to keep your filament secured on the spool when you're not using it. This is the K2 filament clip by designer K2 Kevin. I first saw this on a YouTube short from Courtney at Filament Stories. And by the way, if you haven't seen her channel, there's a link in the description. She has a lot of great videos showing a lot of great filament. And she shows off a bunch of cool models and has good tips for 3D printing. So why would you need this? Well, not every spool has a place to tuck the end of the filament when you're finished with it and you're putting it away. Some of them have two holes side by side that you can use, but then you're having to bend the filament really tightly to make that work. Some of them only have one hole and the filament can slip back out of it unless you fold it over. And some don't have any holes at all. Or if you want to get technical, they have like a hundred holes, but you know what I mean. So it's the K2 filament clip to the rescue. It's been cleverly designed to not only clip your filament into place on the spool, it also stays on the filament, not really getting in the way of anything, and then it's ready for you to use when you're taking the filament back off the printer. Just snap the end of the filament into the clip and put your filament away. Ta-da! Okay, so now that's the last of the 3D printed tools for 3D printing. And just a reminder, there are links for all of them in the description, and all of them are free to download. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end. And thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.